In a previous video, we saw how coherent demodulation could be used to demodulate a signal. We saw just how imperative it was for the carrier signal's frequency to completely match the frequency at the demodulator end. And we also learned how to use envelope detection to get around this problem by using the double sideband lodge carrier technique. However, and unfortunately, there are limitations to the envelope detection technique. These limitations pertain to the amplitude and symmetry of the signal. This raises the need for a demodulation scheme that can extract the frequency from the demodulated signal and also be able to keep up with the frequency should any changes occur. Enter the phase lock loop, or PLL. There are many applications to the phase lock loop. We will narrow our focus to the application of PLL in AM demodulation. Here are the components of the phase lock loop. This is the phase detector, but for our purposes, let's just consider this as a simple multiplier. This is the loop filter, and this is the voltage controlled oscillator. Our focus will mainly be this input and this output. Notice the 90 degree phase shift. When I get a input that's a cosine, the output will be a sine. As can be seen here, this is a closed loop system. The task of V out is to lock and track the frequency of V input. Now phase lock loop design is its own topic, but quickly. Now you must design a filter that will produce this VE. This VE must induce the voltage control oscillator to produce a signal that oscillates with the frequency of VI. And again, because this is a closed loop configuration, if no changes take place in V input, there should be no changes in V output. However, if a change does take place in V input, then V output should be able to track V input within a reasonable range of operations. And now that we know a little bit about PLLs, let's see how they could be used to demodulate an AM signal. In the previous schemes, we acquired prior knowledge about the frequency of the carrier signal in order to be able to do a successful demodulation. And if any sudden changes were to take place at this frequency, well that would quickly degrade or corrupt our output message signal. But now, I don't need any prior knowledge of the frequency beforehand. I can instead extract the frequency from the demodulated signal itself. The PLL will be able to determine the frequency and will lock upon it. All I need to do is put the signal through a delay block of pi over 2 in order to change it into a cosine and then perform the normal demodulation from there on end. So this is the modulated AM signal and it's being multiplied with the oscillator at the exact same frequency and I'm using a low pass filter to filter out the high frequency component and a DC block to get rid of the DC component and I'm able to extract my message signal at the very end. Very cool. I hope that makes sense. Now go check out this cool vintage function generator. This raises the need for a demodulation scheme that can keep track of 
Sarva. Mr. Nairam, please join us at the new...